And I'm serious, if you want Silver Eagles, this is the best time since 2019. And for those collectors out there, I would think that the 2023 Silver Eagle would be very, very demanded because I can't imagine that the mintage will be amount to much of anything. I don't know if you've looked at the recent mint numbers, Chris, but I can't imagine that. Join us in this insightful video with Andy Sheckman, CEO of Miles Franklin, a seasoned expert in precious metals, who delves into the dynamics of Silver Eagle premiums. Discover how these premiums have once again risen, gaining a deeper understanding of their significance in today's market landscape. Additionally, Andy sheds light on the intricate workings of American Silver Eagle margins, providing you with valuable insights into this fascinating aspect of the silver market. Tune in to gain a comprehensive grasp of these topics and navigate the world of silver investment with confidence. Don't go anywhere. Keep watching the video till the end. Yeah, I mean, again, the only item that I noticed starting to move up in premium again would be, of course, the Silver Eagle. Everything else has, for the last three weeks that we've been focusing on premiums, talking about them leveling off, I would say that's a fair, a fair statement, a fair assessment. They have leveled off. They haven't really gone higher, and they haven't gone lower. Um, but the Silver Eagles have. And, you know, it's interesting. Um, we purchased, and, and I'm dead serious about this and happy for anyone to try to re refute it, we purchased almost one half of the entire allocation that the U.S. Mint put out, almost 400,000 coins over, um, over a, a very short period of time, and, and they have just disappeared. The, the, um, the Silver Eagle market is, is on fire. And people, I think, you know, there are a lot of reasons. You have um, the states that are using silver and gold as legal tender and more and more and more of them signing up to it. And you have the fact that people really have not had a chance to accumulate or own any Silver Eagles without paying an exorbitant premium for four years. And so they have been on a tear and not just with Miles Franklin, everybody has um, blown through them in a crazy fashion. And so uh, you're beginning to see premiums rise again. You know, the Mint said that they would double allocation, but you know, in the end, 2023 is gonna be a very, very small mintage year in comparison to previous years. So, you know, doubling from a very small number, it, it's while it's significant, it's still, I would argue going to be um, a, a poultry number based upon the demand. And if the demand and the price were, you know, if the price was where it had been prior to 2019 forever, the Silver Eagles, they, they could have made 50 million Silver Eagles the last three years, every single year and easily sold out of production. So yes, they've come down a lot and yes, they've been hugely accumulated and scooped up. Uh, and yes, premiums are beginning to rise again. Is this going to be sustained? I guess we shall see. But my advice to people who have wanted to buy Silver Eagles for the past several years is you're not going to find a better time to do it than right now, at least. That is true of more or less almost the last four years. The primary distributors who take the allocations from the Mint, I, I would say, look, I don't blame them. And I know that sounds kind of gross to some people listening. Like, why would anyone pay those exorbitant premiums? You know, they were buying back at super high premiums too. No one ever really asked about that. But by the same token, you know, if you're only getting 20% uh, or less of, of what is demanded, each one of these primary distributors only getting 20% or less of what is demanded, well, that's what that's what you know the, the supply and demand cross represents, you know, a, a price where supply and demand find equilibrium. Well, that's that's where they were. And and if you're a, a US mint, you know, um, primary distributor and you have um, all sorts of, of dealers all around the world that are asking you, I need to buy eagles, I need to buy eagles sell me what you got and you don't know what the next month looks like dealing with the U.S. Mint who has been incredibly inefficient and and really hasn't you know 
been very good at communicating to to the industry as to why they haven't been meeting demand. And there were all sorts of rumors. Was it a shortage of blanks or or was it was there something more nefarious going on? Were they stockpiling? And and then you had that interview that Big Swear did prior to the one with the U.S. Mint. He did the one with Sunshine Mint where the, the owner or the CEO of Sunshine Mint dispelled the, the rumor of it being blanks because he said, no, the mint delivers us Comex bars that they take off the exchange and they deliver to us and then we make the blanks for them. So, and I'm serious, if you want Silver Eagles, this is the best time since 2019. And for those collectors out there, I would think that the 2023 Silver Eagle would be very, very demanded because I can't imagine that the mintage will be amount to much of anything. I don't know if you've looked at the recent mint numbers, Chris, but I can't imagine that they're very much at all. My guess would be um, seven or 8 million so far or less. I'm not sure that's just a guess, but if that is the case, that puts it down as one of the lowest mintages ever. So I think that's something to, for people to consider. It's almost like there's very little middle ground between the people who understand metals and the people who have no understanding at all. And if you understand it, you can see in your mind's eye the acceleration of what appears to be, you know, like Rafi says, the end game or a reset or something, that Rubicon that we are closely approaching this event, whatever it is, um, the, 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 deterioration of the fabric of this country, um, people are, are, are seeing it and understand that there is going to be a time where having gold and silver will be incredibly important. And so I don't think there is quite the angst that you would normally find in markets that aren't uh, performing the way we would think, that are counterintuitive. I think the smart people understand that you know, you don't go into a store and looking to buy some jeans, and you're like, shit, they're on sale again. Damn it. You know, you're, you should be happy. And that only goes so far, if, you know, if if this is a normal investment. But to me, this isn't. This is wealth. And the people who understand that understand that perhaps it's a fleeting phenomenon, not only the price suppression, but also the ability to easily obtain product and you know all it takes is one more event and i think enough people understand that the people who would be frustrated would be the people who wanted to buy gold and silver to make a profit to get rich that's not the reason to do it you may, you may very well do it the, the fundamentals behind silver are incredibly compelling for that but if you're looking at it as protection from what's happening and what's going to happen, then no, there isn't that angst. And quite frankly, our business is much stronger when the price comes down. And there's enough information out there to keep people from, you know, um, freaking out based upon the performance. You can see what's happening. You can see the huge demand on, on uh, COMEX and the deliveries off of the LBMA and COMEX and the ETFs. You can see the big money buying it and standing for delivery. And, as you and I talked about before the show here, you can also see that the commercial banks are uh, net long in silver and the money managed money is net short. And for those of you who understand COMEX, that's like you have a, a um, Molotov cocktail and a, a lighter in your hand and all you gotta do is touch it because that's the environment where the commercial banks will, will make all of this money as the price goes up and the short managed money who never win this game will have to cover those shorts. So, this is a, something you really don't see very often in terms of a of a of a bullish backdrop. Well, that's as bullish as it would ever get, in my opinion, from a COT perspective, a commitment to traders report right there. Well, the proof coins, you can buy proof coins directly from the mint, and they also do, they will sell the one ounce silver uncirculated coin. And let's talk about the proofs first. The proof is the same piece of silver that you get a silver eagle with, except they polish it under an industrial buffer until you can see your your image, your your reflection in it. And then they stamp it two or three times for greater definition and put it in a velvet box. And um, so they sell it at a huge premium. It's a collector item. And the uncirculated silver eagle, they're not coming in tubes and boxes. They're one-offs in, in, a, in a velvet box or 
a blue box with the certificate. They're collector pieces from the U.S. Mint. They are they are not the commercial strike coins that go out to the primary distributors. So nothing that you can buy on the U.S. Mint website would be what would be considered commercial strike. All of this is considered uh, collectible directly from the U.S. Mint, and, you know, and they make some fun things to look at. It's compelling, I understand, but um, you know, it, it's kind of like the cherry on the Sunday. You want the vanilla ice cream, you got to buy the commercial strike. This is it, uh, are, are things that are completely, completely collectible and that's it. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, the, the best thing for barter, I mean, if you're talking value, would be Mercury Dimes and Washington Quarters. They don't carry extra premiums. But if you want to buy half dollars and, and some of the older quarters, like the... Uh, uh, you know, the Barber Quarter or the um, uh, the uh, Frank Ben Franklin half dollar or the Mercury Dime or the Walking Liberty or the Seated Liberty, any of these other older, older coins, um, you're going to pay a premium for it. Now I'm getting into more numismatic. For me, uh, you know, I buy the Morgan and Peace Silver Dollars circulated, the old ones, if you want something along those lines. But if you're going to sell anything or barter with anything, the best the best way to do it most often would just be the regular um, uh, Roosevelt Times and Washington Quarters because you're going to find them in the best condition. That is unless you can get some of the older stuff that isn't worn down and it's more collectible. It's more sought after. So, yes, to his point, use the worn ones if people will take it. Use the Frank uh, – the um, – uh, Roosevelt's and the Washington Quarters first because the, the Mercury Dimes are older. They're Ultimately, the Silver Eagle market is experiencing shifting dynamics. Demand, spurred by legal tender adoption and restricted supply, has led to fluctuations in premiums. Primary distributors hold a key role in balancing this equation, impacting the premiums we see. While the U.S. Mint's actions remain enigmatic, the present moment presents a reasonable opportunity for acquiring Silver Eagles. As we continue navigating this intricate landscape, stay attuned to the interplay between supply, demand, and market forces. Thank you for your time and stay tuned for further insights and updates. Subscribing to our channel and liking this video would be greatly appreciated.